those uh, members of Al-Qaeda and other terrorist organizations uh, literally can run, but they can't hide. Run, but they can't hide. Run, but they can't hide. After 9-11, George W. Bush's counter-terrorism strategy involved a lot of going to war. Big, long, costly wars featuring full-on invasions, lengthy occupations and tens of thousands of civilian deaths. But Obama prefers to go after individuals rather than entire nations all while still continuing to undermine other countries' sovereignty as well as fundamental human rights principles, of course. Drone attacks have been the signature counter-terrorism tactic of the Obama administration. These involve using unmanned aircraft armed with weapons to target and kill suspected terrorists or insurgents, or in Obama's case, even to kill people who are simply displaying behaviour that suggests they may be militants. But sometimes the target is more valuable to the US alive than dead, and sometimes drones simply aren't practical. And so in these cases, the Obama administration has preferred to order commando raids. These are quick in-out jobs, where members of the US's elite forces arrive in a country often via the unconventional method of parachuting or abseiling in or arriving on water and usually under the cover of darkness. Once there, they aim to kill or abduct their target as quickly as possible before departing again. And if the target's been abducted, he or she will then likely be taken away for so-called interrogation. But more on that later. Sometimes all of this will take place without the US ever informing the country in question of its plans. Of course, these sorts of raids aren't anything new. The US has been trying to take out or kidnap people this way for decades. And this month, October 2013, for those of you watching in the future, actually happens to be the 20 year anniversary of the infamous Black Hawk operation in which two US Army helicopters were shot down in the Somali capital of Mogadishu while on a mission to capture the leaders of a local rebel group. But while they might not be anything new, the Obama administration has invested heavily in these sorts of missions. <laughs> the most famous commando raid carried out under Obama is of course the raid in which the former Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden was killed by the US's elite Navy SEALs. That raid was carried out in Pakistan, where bin Laden was hiding out at the time, and the Pakistani government were pretty angry that they hadn't been informed or consulted beforehand. But the most recent example of America carrying out such an operation took place on the 5th of October, when US forces carried out twin assaults in Somalia and Libya. The assault in the town of Baraway in Somalia didn't quite go to plan. It was designed to capture the Al-Shabaab leader Mukhtar Abu Zabiya, also known as Ahmed Ghadani, who is said to be the mastermind of the September 2013 attack on the Westgate shopping mall in neighbouring Kenya. You can click here to watch a video we made about the militant group Al-Shabaab and its involvement in the Westgate attack. The Navy SEALs involved in the attack, yep, those same ones who carried out the raid on Bin Laden, were beaten back by heavy fire and forced to retreat via the speedboat on which they'd arrived. This was a very different outcome to another assault carried out in Barawi in 2009. On that occasion, US Special Forces killed their intended targets, the leader of Al-Qaeda in Somalia, Ali Saleh al-Naban. Over in the Libyan capital of Tripoli, however, the US Army's Delta Force was having more success. They managed to kidnap their target, the alleged Al-Qaeda leader, Nazi Abdul Hamid al ruke also known as Abu Anas al-Libi. Back in 2000, al-Libi was charged by US federal court in New York for his alleged role in the 1998 bombings of the US embassies in Kenya and Tanzania, which killed a total 224 people. 
According to the New York Times, Al Libby was then taken out of Libya and at the time of making this video was being so-called interrogated aboard a US Navy ship at an unknown location in the Mediterranean Sea. Not only had his family not been informed of his whereabouts, but he had also not been given access to a lawyer. It was expected that Al Libby would eventually be sent to New York to face the charges made against him 13 years ago. But while the Somali Prime Minister welcomed the US intervention, the Libyan government claimed it had not been informed in advance and demanded an explanation from the Americans. Of course, the US says that Libya did approve the raid and that Al Libby is being lawfully detained under the law of war. Which is funny because according to the United Nations, the prohibitions against taking of hostages, abductions or unacknowledged detention are not subject to derogation. The absolute nature of these prohibitions, even in times of emergency, is justified by their status as norms of general international law. To be clear, this means that no government is allowed to either abduct anyone or detain them in an unknown location without access to a lawyer under any circumstances. But despite all this, the Obama administration has been in the habit of carrying out of what the US likes to call irregular rendition, what is also referred to as extraordinary rendition. This is the practice of extraditing a person to another country through a process that does not give them the opportunity to judicially challenge their transfer. In the case of Al Libby and others, this process has been kidnapped. The Al Libby case bears a lot of similarities with the case of a former Al Shabaab commander named Ahmed Abdul Qadir Wasami. Wasami was captured by the US military in the Gulf of Aden in 2011 and then interrogated aboard a Navy ship for two months without being advised of his rights or provided a lawyer. He was later sent to New York for prosecution and in 2000 it was revealed that he had pleaded guilty in secret and is now cooperating with the US authorities. Under Bush, the phrase extraordinary rendition became synonymous with torture and although the Obama administration has said that torture is no longer going on, the fact that rendition activities are kept top secret means that no one can really know for sure. Although unfortunately, we can guess. 